What's up my reseller friends? My name is Sabrina. I thrift to resell on eBay, Poshmark, and Macari. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my recent what solds. I'm gonna show you things that I think are great things to pick up and maybe some things that aren't so good to pick up. And then I'm gonna end with two stories about some ridiculous customer service things that I had to deal with um, selling on one on eBay and then another one on Poshmark. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it and I'm gonna show you what sold. So last Thursday, I had gone to my favorite local thrift store and they were having all Halloween stuff 75% off. And I got really excited because I knew that I still had time to get Halloween stuff listed and sold. And I still think there is still time to do it. Um, but I was really excited. So I went through all the Halloween stuff and I picked out a bunch of costumes. Now, my strategy for sourcing costumes is I will buy and list and sell costumes all year long, but I mostly focus on children's costumes. I do buy adult costumes, but it's got to be something that's like really good quality or something that's really unique. I, um, because those typically typically don't sell that well during the regular year. However, children's costumes just sell good all year long, especially Disney costumes because parents are constantly having like princess themed birthday parties or maybe they're taking their kids to Disney and want to dress them up. I tend to gravitate more towards children's costumes. I have had some adult costumes. I have just sat and sat in my store for like years. So this is what I focus on. Um, so I did buy a bunch of kids costumes while I was at the thrift store. I got them for like really cheap. I paid like $3 for them. I came home and I listed them right away. Like I knew I didn't want to waste a moment and I wanted to have them listed for the weekend. So I was going to show you the costumes that sold from that. So this is the first one. It is an Aurora Sleeping Beauty costume. Now this isn't a Disney store one. The Disney store ones are the best ones they sell for the most money or Disney parks. Uh, but this one was still a really nice dress and it was pretty good quality. So this one sold for $17 plus the cost of shipping. The next one is this um, Disney Descendants. Now this one is Disney store. This is a male costume. It's from Descendants 3. This one sold for $34 plus the cost of shipping. We've got this Joker costume. I accepted an offer on this one. I had it listed for $15 plus shipping. Somebody offered me $13 and I took it. The reason why this one was listed lower is because there was a lot of them on eBay. So I had a lot of competition. So I had to price it to sell. This was the best one. This is another Disney Descendants. This was probably donated by the same person, but this is one of the boy characters. This is Jay. He plays the son of Jafar. And it's really rare that you find anything of this Jay character guy. So I got really excited when I found this because I already knew that this one was going to be worth money. No one had any of these listed on eBay. So I listed mine at $75. The best I could find was there was one sold on Poshmark. It sold for $35, but I felt like $35 was pretty low. So I listed mine at $75 plus shipping. Someone sent me an offer for $50, and I was happy to take that quick sale. And again, I think I paid like 3 bucks for this costume, and it was in really good condition. So those were the four costumes that sold. I think I only, I think I picked up like eight and of the eight, four of them sold like within 48 hours. Next is some Boyd Bears. Now I like to pick up Boyd Bears at yard sales. Um, if you find these for really cheap, they can be um, pretty good sales. This set of three sold for $20 plus the cost of shipping. Now, the only reason why I think this was a good pickup is because I did get it at a yard sale. I think they were a dollar a piece, but I wouldn't spend more than that. And another thing just to keep in mind is even though these are good sales, they can also be slow sales too. At least for me, they are. So they're just one of those types of things that I feel are worth mentioning because they can make you money if you can pick them up for cheap, but just know that they're not the type of thing that's going to fly off your shelf. 
Next is this baby, bear baby, bear plush, rattle, rainbow, pastel, 12 inch pillow, pal doll. <laughs> I literally just read my description, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like to pick up like the, um, like the bigger size, um, beanie baby brand toys. They'll seem to do pretty good for me as well. This one sold for 25 bucks plus shipping. I don't remember how much I pay for this, but I do remember that I did buy it at a yard sale and I seriously doubt I paid more than a dollar for it. So this was a really good flip. So I wanted to show this pop. Uh, I bought her at a at a thrift store. It was in one of those toy grab bags. Um, so I think my cost on her turned out to be like a dollar or something like that. She sold for $15 plus $5 shipping. She was a Hot Topic exclusive. Um, she This one's a little bit more rare because she's got glitter on her. And um, most of the ones on eBay didn't have the glitter. So this was the Hot Topic excuse, exclusive. So it was worth a little bit more. But the reason why I'm sharing this is because I did read something interesting that somebody said on a reseller Facebook group that kind of has me thinking a little bit. So we know that with pops, we know that a lot of these buyers are really picky when it comes to the boxes, which is one of the reasons why I don't like selling pops is because I'm really worried of having like problems down the line with the buyer complaining, opening up returns, blah, 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 blah. But somebody on this Facebook group said that when they buy pops, they actually open them up and sell them as loose so that they don't have to worry about having problems with damaged boxes. That really just got me thinking a little bit. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to do that. If I do come across pops that are worth something, I'm just going to sell them in their box. And I do like to enclose in the description um, that the, the box is not in mint condition, that it that it's possible that it could have little flaws on it. Even though to me, the box looks perfect, I still always disclose that um, just to kind of save myself. And I've never really had a problem with it, but I... I did appreciate this girl's um, strategy and it was something to think about, even though it's something that I'm decided that I'm not going to do, it is still worth mentioning, I think. And I thought that was pretty smart. So next is this set of scrubs. This is by Wonder Wink. The sizes were a little bit different. So the reason why I'm bringing this up, I don't like to just talk about things that do great. I also like to do talk about things that don't do so great or things that I've talked about before in the past that I've done good selling that I feel like I no longer do. So I like to talk about all these different types of things. Now, I was kind of organizing my inventory bins a little bit and I I like to store my, my stuff like with similar items. So like I'll store like all the Barbies together. Or I'll store like all of the um, bathing suits together or whatnot, you know, that I just store them by like categories. And I have a bin where I like to keep scrubs. And I was looking at my bin and I was just like, I don't have any scrubs left. I've sold all of them. I really should stock up on some more scrubs next time I go sourcing, if I can find them for a good price. Um, because I always, they always sell really well for me. So I actually did go to a yard sale and I came across a whole bunch of scrubs. And then I bought a Winnie the Pooh one at a thrift store. So I had some new scrubs to add to my store. Well, they are just sitting in there. And when I was listing them, I was looking up comps and comps on them were not really good. So I feel like scrubs don't do as well as they once did. So this was kind of like a learning curve for me, I suppose, if you want to say. Um, so I'm probably not going to focus too much on picking these up anymore. Even the Winnie the Pooh one, it's just like, there's, I, I think a lot of, so the girl that I had bought all those scrubs from at the yard sale, she told me 
that her doctor's office, they don't allow certain type of scrubs anymore. Like you, they, they couldn't wear ones that had like patterns or something on it. So I don't know uh, if you work in the medical field, definitely comment below. Or if you know somebody, you know, information about it. Like, why do you think that scrubs just aren't selling anymore or are not selling as well as they used to? I would love to hear um, the reasoning for that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But this set did sell for $11.99 plus the cost of shipping. Um, somebody messaged me about this asking if I would like drop the price because shipping was too high. And I'm like, it's $8.99 shipping. I feel like that's not that high. So I was just like, sorry, it's still a new listing. I'll probably take a dollar or two off if you like. Um, I think they were trying to get it for like super cheap and I was just like, no, but then it ended up selling for full price. So it's all good. Next, we've got some more Disney descendants. This is an Audrey doll. And this is another one that I wanted to talk about. Now this Audrey doll in particular sold for a really good price, $25 plus shipping. I consider to, I consider a doll like a Barbie doll type doll selling for 25 and it's like a loose used doll that's a great find right so i'm really happy with this but not all the audrey dolls do well and i have noticed that the disney descendants dolls just don't really sell for as much as they used to i used to sell these all the time and get really good money off of them and it's just not what it used to be and i think that um just the hype of it has gone down. They haven't come out with a new movie in quite a while. I did hear that they are coming out with a new one eventually. Um, it is going to be pretty sad because one of the main characters has passed away since then. So I think it's going to be pretty sad not seeing him in the movie. But um, maybe once that new movie comes out, maybe the hype for it will go back up. And these Descendants um, characters will be worth money again. But we'll see. Or maybe the market's just saturated right now. So I bought this and after I bought it, I kind of regretted it because I was like, I don't know, like, was this a good idea? I bought this at an estate sale. I paid a dollar or two for it. It's a yearbook, but it's for like a community college in um, Fullerton, California. It was 1960. But I actually had, I had fun looking at the book. Like I looked through it at all the pictures and stuff. I think I even like picked out random people from the yearbook and Googled their names just because I wanted to see like what became of their life and stuff. I'm really weird with things like that. Like I get really like curious about stuff <laughs> and um, I get really fascinated with like history or whatnot. And so, um, so yeah, I posted it and it sold for $20 free shipping. And I'm really curious who bought it, why they bought it. Maybe they went to this school. Maybe this was like their yearbook that they're like trying to replace, or maybe like their grandparents went there. I don't know. I don't know the reason behind it, but um, yeah, I thought it was kind of cool, kind of a cool share. So next is a 101 Dalmatian game. Now eBay has a new feature where you can show a video of how um, you can upload a video, but why is it not on here anymore? It's like gone, but I did have a, oh, here it is. <laughs> Let's see if it will play. So I played with it to show that it worked. Um, but when I, when I, um, played, um, the second round, it wasn't working right. So I did disclose that in the listing. And um, yeah, the person who bought it left me um, good feedback saying that it worked as described. So I really love when I get feedback like that. Um, so yeah, I think that this is a really cool feature that eBay's added. Um, we should be using this more often, especially with electronics. Next is this vintage um, women's snow ski jacket with a bib set. And I got this at a yard sale. I think I paid $5 for the set. Um, but I really liked it because it's super vintage and it has like those cool like, like um, retro type colors and schemes and stuff. So I knew that it would sell well. Um, it actually sat for quite some time. Uh, 
I think it sat for like six months because I listed it at the beginning of summer. <laughs> so it sat for a while, but now it's that season and it's sold. And I actually was getting a lot of low blow offers on this. And I always counter offered those offers and no one ever accepted them. But then I put it on sale for uh, $62.99 and someone bought it, paid full price plus the cost of shipping. Next, we've got um, some Barbie clothes. So this set sold for $20 and then the same person bought this dress too as well. This one's $12.99, but I did have a sale, buy one, get one 20% off. So they got 20% off of this one and I had free shipping. So it was like a combined shipping, but I felt like that was a really, really great sale to sell both of those together. Um, but something I did want to mention about Barbie clothing today, when I was looking through my Facebook and I was looking at one of the reselling groups. Um, somebody was mentioning something about there was a brand that uh, they had bought because they had seen a YouTuber post that they always have luck selling that. And they're like, I can't get rid of it. Like I got horrible advice from that uh, YouTuber. And it's like, like it really made me like think about that and it really made me reflect because I made YouTube videos and I'm just like, you know what? I think it's like so important. Like I assume that everybody knows that just because these things sell for me doesn't mean they'll sell for you. And maybe you can sell things better that don't really sell good for me. But I think it's just important that maybe just to throw a reminder out there that for me, I sell Barbie clothes really well, but I think one of the main reasons why I sell them so well is because I've been selling vintage Barbie clothes for a long time. Um, and I have like a clientele. So I have people who follow my store and when they see that I post new Barbie stuff, like they're looking at them. So I've got a little bit of that clientele set up. So that's one of the reasons why I think I'm really successful at selling Barbie clothing. Now, somebody who's maybe new at it and maybe um, uh, doesn't really understand that Barbie, vintage Barbie universe or how to like the right words to use or whatnot, it may be harder for you to sell these things. Um, that's, that's why I think it's just so important that we always just try things and see what our niches are. And it's great to take advice from YouTubers, but don't like base all your business off of like what other YouTubers are saying, because there's no eBay store that's created equal. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I thought it was important that I mentioned that because I know that I'm always talking about Barbie clothes and I'm always like saying how great these sales are, but I really did reflect on it. And I was like, well, maybe it's easier for me because I've been doing it for a long time. So I've got that experience and I've got that clientele. So maybe somebody who's new to selling, um, it won't come as easy. So I just think that's very important to throw that out there. Just continue to sell the things that you love to sell. And even if they're not selling super fast right away, but you know that there is a market out there for it, just keep trying. You'll get good at it. Okay, there was that dress again. And um, this was a, a set of pillowcases I found at an estate sale. I paid a dollar a piece, so $2 total into this. Um, I actually put the pillowcases on a pillow and displayed them on a bed to actually uh, show the product in action, like what it looks like. So that's something that I've been kind of trying to do a little bit more of lately. So my photographs in my eBay store are kind of all over the place. I encourage you if you want, I put my eBay link in the description for anyone to go on and look at my store and see what types of pictures I take or what it is that I'm doing. Um, I have no problems with anyone snooping through my store. If anything, that helps me in the algorithm because people are looking at my store. So you're definitely welcome to go in and look at how I do things. But I really like, um, I've been really trying to post a lot of pictures that show what the items really look like. I've been doing a lot less like solid white backgrounds and stuff like that and putting like gray backgrounds or I take a picture of it on this like we have this really nice um, shelf in our living room um, that has like a really clean nice background behind it and we normally keep like a little green plant on it 
Um, and I've been noticing that I've been taking really nice pictures, which I just showed you these ones right here. So like, I, I feel like these pictures look really nice because it just kind of shows like the item, like in real life, you know what I mean? It doesn't seem like just like a regular, like stock photo. And I think that right now people on eBay are like really um, wanting more of that because with photo room, is that what it's called? That app that a lot of resellers are using now. I use it too. I used it on um, that other one that I just showed you. Hold on, where is it? This one, I use that photo room app on it. Um, but a lot of resellers are using this. And this is a really cool app. Don't get me wrong. This looks awesome. But um, I kind of feel like there's a lot of that on eBay now. And sometimes it's hard for people to um, distinguish. They're like, well, I'm looking for you know, something vintage or like different, like that looks new because it has that plain white background. So I've just been kind of really um, trying to steer away from it as much as possible, just depending on the item. Um, this particular item, because it was so long and it took up a lot of space, like I didn't really have a good place um, to take the picture, to display it, to make it look nice. So that's why I did that with that. But my, my pictures are all over the place with like different things. Like some of them have white backgrounds like this. Some of them have like, look like gray backgrounds. Some of them, you know, look like this. <laughs> so this is the next one. This is a, um, 101 Dalmatian. So this is a vintage from the nineties. Um, but this is one of those like plastic protectors that you put on, the um, shower faucet. Um, so like, you have to say like your kids taking a bath, um, you don't want them to like hurt themselves on the faucet. So you put this over it um, for protection. Now, as I was listing this, I was looking at mine and see like comps on like some of these vintage ones, the Disney ones were doing pretty good. I think there was a little mermaid one that sold for like 30 bucks. So if you ever see these out in the wild at yard sales for cheap, not a bad pickup. Um, I sold this within like um, less than a week of listing, I think. So yeah. Got these vintage Halloween towels at uh, Savers. I paid a dollar for it. Or was it two? One or two dollars, I forget. But it sold for $15 plus the cost of shipping. I love selling vintage Halloween stuff. I will pick up vintage Halloween all year long because people love it. People love Halloween. So, yeah. Next is this Oshkosh Bagosh uh, overall set. Now, Oshkosh, Oshkosh Bagosh, it sells really well for me. They don't always sell fast. This is another thing like those Boyd Bears that, I'm that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. But... They sell, they're, they're just one of those things that always sell. They don't always sell for a lot of money. They don't always sell fast, but they always sell. Like everything that I've ever posted sells. But I will tell you, you got to get these cheap and you've got to promote them because there's a lot of competition out there selling this brand. Make sure you promote it. You'll get buried in the what eBay site, I don't know what you want to, it'll get buried in there and, and it'll be harder to sell. So make sure you're promoting it. And um, yeah, if you find the vintage ones, those ones do even better. So this is a Betsy Johnson purse. I bought this, I believe it was back in 2017, like right at the start of my reselling business. I was at Ross and I found a whole bunch of these Betsy Johnson coin purses they were all retailed for like 60 bucks and they were on clearance for five dollars so i bought every single one of them and these sold so slow like seriously like it took forever to sell these and this was like the last one i had left and it finally sold and it sold for 17.99 i did free shipping i hardly made anything off of this and i like held on to it for so long and i had it cross posted on poshmark and macari this whole time i've ended it relisted it put it on sale i've done all kinds of things and it's like i finally sold it so i've just noticed that betsy johnson purses just it's hard. There, there's some of them that do good, but it's hard. I think the market's just saturated with them. I don't think it's really trendy at the moment. So I kind of steer away from Betsy Johnson. And not only that, it seems like whenever I find Betsy Johnson anywhere, like there's always like flaws all over them. Like the hell. Um, so I'm kind of like steering away from 
the two Johnson purses, but her clothes do really well for me. So I'll definitely still pick those up. All right. So I'm pretty much out of my what solds now. And now I'm into the drama. So again, I'm the only reason why I'm telling you these stories, it's not to complain. It's not to like scare anyone off about like customer service type things. It's only for entertainment purposes because we all like a little bit of drama, right? So this is my first story. So I sold this sweater. I guess it's Tucker and Tate. It's this cardigan sweater. Now where I got it from was maybe like three years ago, I had bought on Facebook marketplace, like two garbage bags full of clothes um, from this one chick. And they were really nice clothes. Like everything was from like Macy's and Nordstrom's. There were some really good brands in there. And I made some really good money off of that pickup. I think I spent a hundred dollars on it. And I probably made like somewhere between five, five to $600 off of everything. But this was so long ago. I don't even think I have anything left from that. Um, but this was a piece that I kept for myself because I like cardigan sweaters. So I kept this one and I've worn it a couple of times, but I had recently gone through my closet and um, I took out a few things that I didn't want anymore, just trying to make room for new things. And um, this was one of them. And um, I didn't really spend too much time like looking up comps or anything. I literally just like threw it on eBay really quickly. I like, tried to make a quick 10 bucks off of it. And it sold really quickly too, probably within like less than 48 hours of listing it. Shipped it off right away, you know, forgot about it. And then yesterday or the day before I got a, uh, I got a message from this, a private message from this buyer. Now I was having like a really, really bad day, a horrible day. Like literally I had all this drama trying to get Blink-182 tickets that wasn't working out for me during the pre-sale. And I was really mad and I was just like in a bad mood. I was having like low self-esteem issues. It was just one of those days, you know, we just have those days. And, um, and then I get this message and I just felt like it was just like the last thing to like, that I, I was like, okay, now I'm angry. My day's ruined, <laughs> but, um, it was already ruined, but it was just one of those things. So anyways, she messages me and she was so mean. It was like half of the words were all in caps and <laughs> she was like, your listing is so deceitful or no, no, no. She said, you are so deceitful. The way you listed this, this is not a woman's cardigan. This is a child's cardigan. And I looked up this brand and this is like a child's brand of clothing. And like, I'm reporting you to eBay and blah, blah, blah. Like totally like went off on me. Like just jump the gun. Like it just sent like an awful mean email. I think I even cried after I read it. I was just like, this is such a bad day. This person's a jerk. So um, I looked into it myself and I did find out that it was a kid's sweater, which is like crazy because it came out of that bag that had all those adult clothes in it. I actually wore it. It fit me fine. I wear a medium and this said it was a medium, right? Watch, look. Wait, that's the wrong tag. See, medium, but it does say 810. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. Like, women's sizes go by numbers sometimes, too. And But then look at I also included the measurements, too, as well. So I feel like it wasn't, like, 100% my fault. But um, normally, like, when I'm in my right state of mind, I just would have been like, I'm so sorry for the mistake. Please open a return. I will pay for you to send it back. I'm so sorry for the mistake or whatever, but because I was in such a bad mood and didn't want to deal with this person, um, I just responded and I was like, this was an honest mistake. Um, I've offered you a, a full refund. And then I just said, um, always remember to show kindness and compassion. And then that was it. I just said it, but I was like, that kind of goes against like, what I normally do, but it was just a horrible day. And I just didn't, I just wanted to be done with this. It was just like, it wasn't worth like my um, mental health. I was just like, I don't want to message this person. I just want to be done with them. Like they're really mean. And then they didn't respond after that. Like they just disappeared. So I'm just like, whatever, but yeah, there's, there's that. So the next one, <laughs> of course, this is Poshmark, right? So I sold this on Poshmark. Uh, it's just a hot topic brand t-shirt. 
you can see it right here. Hot Topic brand shirt. Um, so I had it listed for, I think, $13. And somebody sent me a message. You could see it down here. Oh, is it okay for me to show their username? Whatever. I don't care. Um, so she said, hi, can you double check for any pinholes or stains? Thanks. So I did. I actually went and um, I always check for that kind of stuff all the time. I'm super honest in my listings. So I did go and I checked and I didn't find any stains, any pinholes, like everything looked absolutely perfect to me. I mean, you can even see in the pictures, like there's no stains, there's no pinholes, like everything's good, right? Looks good. Um, so then I responded and I said, sorry for the late response. I double checked for you and couldn't find any pinholes or stains, which was 100% true. I could not find any. I even had a package in a bag already and I opened it up to, just to double check for her. So then she sent me an offer for $10 and I was just like, eh, fine. It's just, just like a, there's nothing too special about this shirt. It's just a Hot Topic brand graphic t-shirt. So um, even though Hot Topic stuff does sell really well for me, I, always pick it up when I see it. So, um, so yeah, so I sold it and then she received it and, uh, left me like a five-star review. And then probably I would say like 10 minutes after, um, leaving me that review, she backtracks it and, um, leaves me a new review, which I will show you the new one. She changed it from five stars to four stars. And what I could approve is the item description. Additional comments. This shirt, not as described. There's a pinhole near the back of the collar. <laughs> really, guys? Really? Let's go back. Let's look here. Dude, I, I feel like this just like proves my theory about when people ask like weird questions like this, like they're already like planning something, right? Do you freaking see, there's no freaking pinholes. Like the only thing I can think of is like, she was so determined to find one. Now I worked at Hot Topic for many, many years. And I know for a fact that they, they pin the, um, the tag at the collar. So I do know that, but they always pin it at the scene. So they're really good at that. They don't pin it like anywhere else. That's going to like damage the shirt. It's always like right on like the collar somewhere. So possible that there is a pinhole by the collar, but I feel like the only way she found it was by like stretching out the shirt and looking under a light or something. And I'm just like, really girl? I already gave you $3 off of it. I shipped it to you super fast. 10 bucks, a $10 t-shirt. Some people are just impossible to please. <laughs> All right, my friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or useful in any way at all. If you did, please like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Never forget, when you thrift upon a star, all your dreams will come true. I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.